right, so I want to go through this who's responsible thing. And I'll, I'll talk about this really quick. I like taking pictures for my week. We were uh, at a convention on Friday, and this is a picture with myself and Catherine uh, with, uh, her name it was, or I should say is Monroe Nielsen. And we got the privilege to meet and talk with her a little bit. I don't know if you recognize the name or recognize the face, but she was the original Catwoman and the original Bewitched uh, actress. And so uh, for her age, she looks amazing. And uh, she actually has a very, uh, very peppy attitude. And it was, uh, it was really fun to talk with her and to get to meet her uh, this last Friday. But anyways, um, wanted to share that and then jump right into this because uh, we are a little limited on time. So I wanna talk to you, and this is, this is a training, I'm gonna set you up in your guys' listening around this. Um, this is a training for you of how to be more responsible, but this is also a training to help you see how to have others be more responsible because there's no way for you to get them to be responsible. There's no way for you to have your clients or have the people in your, your life or the people that really matter to you get responsible for themselves, maybe even your children, unless you are scaling up how and what level of responsibility you're taking on. So I want to get really clear on like, who is this who is the one responsible for the things happening in my life? And how do I have impact? How do I shift maybe my belief around who is the one responsible? So we're going to talk a lot about in this uh, training about the idea of success, like what it means to have success and what it means to be, uh, to have failure. Because uh, when it comes to the responsible conversation, I find that these two words come up a lot. It's like, well, who's responsible for my success? Who's responsible for my failure? So when it comes to success and failure, it may not be easy to see what lies beneath all this, like what lies beneath the belief that may not be working for you. I'm not saying that we need to get rid of the ones that are, but let's look at like, maybe there's a belief, maybe there's a, a pattern, maybe there's a habit, maybe there's a thought process that just isn't working for you when it comes to how you react to success and failure. And before I start, I want to express that nothing I'm about to say is right and or wrong. It's also not the truth or true. Like, I don't want you to take this training on like, oh my gosh, Matt is speaking the new truth for me. It's the new true. It's like, no, it's not that either. Uh, this, this is just something to try on. I want you to have, or I want to have you see things differently that would provide more power in your life. Like I would, I want you to like try this on like a jacket. Like you could take it off if you wanted, if it doesn't work. Now, how do we have more power in our life? And what does this power word mean? Well, power for this discussion is the function of the velocity in which you attract the things you want. So a lot of us have some level of power and that's why we're able to eventually attract the things we want. But you guys all know people in your life or people you admire that their level of power is just like through the roof. And they, they are the ones that get the things the fastest. It's like, oh man, I'd really like to have a house someday. And it's like these people that have power, like the moment they say, I want a house, somehow they get a house. Like their level of power is just like, you know, in cubics, like quantumly larger than yours. And it's like, how does this, how does this happen? And so when we talk about power, we're going to be talking about how do I increase my level of power so that when I want something or when I want to attract something in my life, that I'm able to get it with more speed, meaning less time, less days, less hours. And I don't know about you, but I'm always looking at this. Like I have a certain level of power. Does that mean like I'm done? It's like, oh, Matt, you know, he's this powerful guy. He's complete. It's like, no way. Like there's, there's always a increase in power that you can have in your life, which would just be the velocity, the speed at which you attract the things that you want. So when you hear this word, that's the way we're talking about power. We're not talking about power, like the, the guy wearing the crown sitting, you know, in the big chair telling everyone what to do. That's not the kind of power we're talking about. So let's talk a bit, a little bit about success. So who is responsible for your individual success? Who is the one? Now, when you hear this, you're going to kind of go like, well, duh, Matt, that sounds uh, simple. Like I, I kind of already understand this. 
And as parents or as children of parents, um, you might look from this angle, like who's responsible for their success. So I'm a parent and you know, you may not be, but you're definitely a child of parents. And you want to look at like, okay, all the successes that have happened for your kids, or if you were the child and they were the parent for yourself, like who was responsible for that success? Uh, you might find that it's common or it's a common belief that the big people in our life were the ones responsible for our success. Like this is a very common theme and you'll see like parents being all proud about their kids doing something like somehow they were the ones fully responsible or you'll see like adults, teachers, uh, different people in your life often take the credit. So I just want you to take a moment and just think of all the stories that you've created around this idea that like your kid's success is dependent on you as a, as a parent or like the things you blame your parents for, for your lack of success in certain areas, you know, whatever. Just take a minute and really soak in like, what stories do you have around your success? And maybe what stories do you have around the success that you're taking credit for around others? And just look at the, the composition of it. Look at the anatomy of it because it's a very unique uh, and if you really start to examine confusing idea that somehow we're attached to this thing, this thing called success for others, or that somehow other people have this attachment or, or stickiness around their success for me, like that somehow they had something to do with it. Now, we grow up and this evolves, right? We grow up from like being kids or having kids and this belief. And, you know, you get older, you go from... Uh, depending on people, uh, financially depend, becoming or being dependent to eventually graduating, going out and getting a job, maybe starting a business. And this belief starts to shift of where success comes from. And many of us mutate this already existing crazy belief from, oh, it was my parents' fault, it was the big people's fault, to it's other, uh, it's my peers' fault. It's my, it's, or it's not even fault. It's like I'm giving credit sometimes to my peers or other adults. Uh, looking for one in charge or the official who's taking credit for all my success, right? So this might be like, uh, we might be looking to people in government roles. Like, oh, it's my, it's my governor's fault. <laughs> That's a common one we're hearing now. It's the uh, president's fault, right? Or or the country's doing great, things are doing great. Uh, well, it's, it's thank goodness for the president, thank goodness for our governor, right? It's like have something, like they get all the credit. Or maybe it's like a boss, like maybe you're an employee or maybe like you have some dependency or some partnership where there's kind of a hierarchy and uh, authority and it's like, oh, well, you know, that's where the success tiers are. Or maybe it's someone that's just leading a group, some organization, or maybe you are the boss or you are politically involved, or you are the one in charge of some group, and you're taking the credit uh, for yourself, like you're the one taking it on. Um, and it kind of occurs easy that way because you're the one on top, right? It seems like even natural, like, oh, well, this is how it's supposed to happen. So I just want you to like soak all this in. Like this is, all I'm doing is we're just looking at the reality around this thing called success and who is responsible for it. So now I want you to look simply at how life occurs for you when you believe others, this one first, others are in charge of your success. They are the ones responsible and get the credit. Just look at that one for a second. It's pretty easy to see that this doesn't feel good. There's something, it, it almost feels off, right? Someone taking all the credit, someone abusing their power and pretending like somehow they are the sole person and only person responsible. Like all of this is uh, kind of a, a construct that commonly, I'm not saying always, but commonly happens when you're the leader, you're the one put in charge or you're the parent and you like do this thing where it's like, you kind of go around acting like it was all you. And it's clear to see, like when you examine this, it's very clear to see like this doesn't work. And you can tell internally even, you can see the examples of it in your life where it's like, and that doesn't feel good. And you might even have some things around it with when you do it, like you're even noticing sometimes when you